with Nathan Baird on deck. Bill? Thanks, Jerry. Hey, Larry. Um, hey, there have been uh, years here where, where you've been, you know, five or six deep at, at defensive tackle. I'm just wondering, is your, I guess, two weeks now out from the season, where, where do you think your depth is at, at that particular position? We'll be right in the same boat. We'll have three guys can play inside, nose got tackle, and then we'll have three guys can play three technique. Uh, we have some young players who are doing a great job of coming along. And uh, so I think we'll be okay starting the season with uh, six guys on the inside have opportunity to play. Does that include Haskell and Tehran? I'm just wondering where both those guys are. Uh, Haskell is not quite cleared yet uh, because of his injury. And Tehran is a slow progress progress going on right now. I mean, hopefully we'll have him by the time we get to game week. Uh, we just bring him along slow with the pandemic, not be able to get you know rehab and all those things that he needs to have. So we just kind of bring him along, but his progress is going well. So we'll see what happens. Get closer to the game week. Thanks. Yep. Next up, Nathan Baird with Cleveland.com and Jared Smalley on deck. Nathan. Yeah, Larry, uh, my first question was actually going to be about Tehran and just what you expect from him in this coming season, considering having missed a whole year. I mean, what what does that slow what he could potentially be this year? Or do you still think this is a year where he could get closer to the ceiling that you guys kind of envisioned when you brought him in? You know, with the injury being out of football for a long time, then a pandemic hit not be able to practice. So it's a progress going for it. You just don't jump back in and be at the same level you were when you got here. So that's why we're doing a great job of kind of developing, uh, getting the skill set back to where it needs to be. And being out of football for years is really tough for anybody to come back and be ready to go. But I think the potential is there, no doubt about that. And now just get them ready to have opportunity to go play in a game and uh, play some live football. So we, we're working real hard to make sure that happens. What's different about Zach Harrison today than from a year ago at this time? Well, really just mature. You know, he's really has done a great job of just maturing as a young player. Uh, he listened very well. He's very coachable. He uh, has all the attributes, uh, what we look for in a player. And Zach is a guy, you tell him to do something, you do it exactly as you ask him to do. And that's what you want your players to do. And, and Zach is going to, from his freshman year, coming in the door, he was different and you know, finished the season the way he played. And, uh, the still is very high for him going into his sophomore season. So I'm really pleased where he at right now. Next up, Jared Smalley, WCMH Channel 4, and Brendan Gulick on deck. Jared? Hi, Larry. On a related note to Zach Harrison, uh, obviously at that position, you're talking about the Bosa's. You're talking about Chase Young, some of the best best football players Ohio State's had uh, at that position. That sets a very high standard. I wonder when you're tutoring a player like that, still a young man, how you use those as teaching tools, but also try to make sure that the pressure on them to live at that level is not too great, that it can be harmful to a player. How do you balance those things? Yeah, that's a great question. I think the biggest challenge for all players is not One and only vice presidential debate of 2020. We can expect to hear Vice President Mike Pence defending the Trump administration while Senator Kamala Harris will likely focus yeah, on President Trump's mishandling of the pandemic. But this debate is happening less than a week away. Larry, we're good. Yeah, Larry, we're good. <laughs> Uh, president debate. Um, <laughs> oh, another story. Uh, yeah, you know, the biggest thing is just trying to really, uh, you know, I tell the players all the time, you can't live up to that standard. The Bose is a special player. Chase Young is a special player. But you can't live up to who you could possibly be. And I think that's the biggest challenge. He's got to kind of block the Norris on the outside that he's going to be the next guy and really continue to concentrate his development. And that's what I've been talking to him about. Just be the best player you can be, Zach. Don't worry about the, the standards you set before you. It's great. Uh, but you got to be your own player. And that way he don't look at himself and say, hey, I got to do this, got to do this, got to get so many sacks. It's tough doing that when you start chasing those kind of things. So he's doing a good job. He's listening. He understands exactly uh, what it takes to be. Uh, we have a lot of noise here today, guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, he, he, uh, he's doing a good job of understanding what it takes to be a elite player. But at the same time, he's got to be himself. And that's the thing I'm talking to him about. If you got all that, with all that noise going on, I'll, I'll weave that together. <laughs> uh, Larry, another question for you about Jonathan yeah. Cooper, the value that he brings back. And we've talked to you a little bit about the fact that he made the sacrifice a year ago uh, to return for another year, and and what that did for your team, what that may potentially do for him. 
now that you've got them through a training camp and now you're getting closer to a first game, can you go, uh, can you go back and, and just put a value on what his return will do for you? It's from a leadership standpoint, you know, just having a guy who's played five years, know the program, know the inside out what we do, and then walk back in the room for another year is kind of outstanding. Our players look up to him. The whole entire team look up to John Cooper. He is what you're looking for in a player. You know, you find, look in the dictionary and find perseverance. And, you know, that's John of, John of Cooper. That's what he's doing. Uh, he's got a chance to have a special year. He is so excited. He's worked extremely hard to be where he's at right now. He's a different player. I tell people all the time that, uh, John Vancouver has some special things ahead of him. Staying healthy is a key, but uh, he's ready to go. And he's excited. You know, he's challenging the young players, and he's setting great marks that how you're supposed to do as a player. And I think that's the biggest thing. A guy like you know Zach Harris and Tariq Smelt and uh, you know, Tyler Friday and John, John, uh, Javante Baptiste look at Coop and say, hey, this is how you're supposed to do it. And I think that's value to the room, my room especially, but you know, for the team to see how hard he works. Next up, Brendan Gulick, Buckeyes now on Sports Illustrated with Austin Ward on deck. Brendan? Hi, Larry. Nice to talk to you. For I, no. hey, I want to ask you a little bit of a, a bigger picture question here because yeah. obviously this has been a, a, as unusual an offseason as, as you've probably ever been through. Yep. Why is Ohio State such a special place to you, and, and how have the last few months perhaps brought that more to the forefront for you? I, that's a great question. I, I tell you why, you know, I don't think I would be here uh, as long as I've been here based on where I've done in the past because of the people here. I'm talking from administration down to the athletic director to our head coach Ryan Day and especially our players. And then the people in the communities, which is outstanding people. You, you talk about you know, in all areas, we've got world-class doctors here that take care of our players. And one of the things I said to myself, you know, when the pandemic hit, I'm more safe here than everything. I feel safe because of the people that we have around us taking care of us. And my players ask me, that, coach, what are you going to do? You know, your age and all that. What are you going to do? I say, you know what? I'm here because I feel very comfortable with the people here we have around us, our world-class doctors, world-class people to take care of us. And, and that really makes me really feel safe, secure. And, and, and certainly my family appreciate that. But what a great place. And, and not only just football, just a great place to live, great community, uh, just a great fan base. And it just it's just a really a it's been a draw for me to be here in my sixth, going to my seventh year now. Thank you. Next up, Austin Ward, Letterman Row with Dan Hope on deck. Austin? Hey, Larry. Hey, Austin. Uh, we've seen, obviously, over the years how important that three technique position is for you. You've also at times sort of borrowed from the edge to fill that. Mm -hmm. if Ron was hurt, or if you needed to move somebody, have you considered that at all to? to transition yet another guy inside, sort of like Jay Sean did last year? Yeah, we've got a plan. You know, we always want to have our best pass rushers on the field uh, during down situations. So we're all going to, we're always going to transition to that. So yes, yeah, so we're working guys that I feel have a chance to really do something with the three technique if we need to make a change to rush the passer. So that's always going to be part of our plan going forward. We just don't know who's going to marriage as that guy right now as we got maybe two weeks away from the game. Uh, but yeah, that's always going to be our plan to be able to have the opportunity to do that with them technique rush the passer so you're the expert and sometimes i just throw out that that maybe tyler friday would be someone who could play in there am i am i wrong at that or or what would you be looking for if somebody needed to kick inside let's just say this uh austin really asked a great question but i'm not going to give you my two bits now so you know that you know me better than that <laughs> great job of trying to get me to say who it is but i'm just going to tell you we, we're going to have a couple guys to be able to do it so we just have to wait and see if we have the opportunity to pass it in the third down, then you'll see the guy emerge that uh, I think you're like what we're doing. I mean, I haven't seen you in like seven months, so I had to at least try. <laughs> yeah, I haven't forgot who you are, so I appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks. Next up, Dan Hope with 11 Warriors and Bill Rabinowitz on deck. Dan? Hey, Larry, I know that uh, Juan's a guy who's uh, spent some time at both the nose and the free tech spot. Kind of where do you see him factoring in right now? I'm sorry, who's the name? Uh, Antoine Jackson. Yeah, Antoine has had a really great camp. I can tell you that. He's had a great camp. He's done some really good things. Uh, him and Tommy, Tommy Toya yeah, has been really a, a foundation of what we're doing right now. And Antoine gives value because he can play two positions. He can play nose and play three technique. So when you go in a row, you have a guy, uh, you really gain an extra guy if something happened in nose position. He can go ahead and play nose or play three technique. 
but that's kind of the, the, the versatility he brings to the table. And I really kind of like where he's at right now. He's practicing really well and, and doing some things for us. And I know that uh, Ty Hamilton was the first, one of the first guys to lose his black stripe. Uh, how's he been doing? And what about uh, Darian and Jacoby as well? Uh, Ty has been doing really well. Ty has put on 20 pounds since he's been here. He came in at 260. He's about 285 right now. And we have moved him inside. And I think that we're, we're doing the same thing. We're trying to transition from being a uh, big nose guard and to a three tech. So that's going really well for him right now. I like where he's at as a young player. Uh, he's still in the development stage, but uh, he's really done a good job since he's been here. He's got stronger. He's got a chance to be a, a player going forward. And Darion is at the deepest fan position. He's working hard, trying to learn the system. <coughs> and uh, he's making progress. I mean, him and not Noah Potter, another guy in the end position. They're both guys making progress right now. Thanks, Larry. Sure. Next up, Bill Rabinowitz with the Columbus Dispatch and Dave Biddle on deck. Bill? Hi, Larry. Uh, hey, Bill. Another question about Zach Harrison. Yeah. You talked about him wanting to not feel like he's got to be the next Chase Young or the next Bosa. Mm -hmm. uh, but he obviously is an extremely talented guy. Mm -hmm. um, how does he kind of handle that pressure? Maybe it's self-imposed. And, and just, you know, could he be one of those kind of players? He certainly has potential to be that, you know. Uh, going into his sophomore year, in, in every sophomore and every great player, Coach DeBosa's chase, uh, there's an up and down in the sophomore year, trying to feel that role that I have to do this, I have to be this. And that's what happens when you do that, you put too much pressure on yourself. And all of a sudden, you start chasing things you shouldn't chase. Uh, so really just trying to keep Zach balanced. We do a great deal of talking uh, about what is expected of him so he doesn't make the expectation bigger than he can handle. Uh, and again, he's just a sophomore. And so as a sophomore, he's still learning how to do this thing the right way. And, but I like where he's at. He's got a chance. Uh, really just kind of depends on him and how, how he's developed his go forward. And could you just kind of uh, discuss, I mean, he was on the Big Ten's anti-hate, anti-racism coalition. Just give a sense of, of just, you know, th that he's more than a football player, what he's like just as a guy. Uh, what a great guy. Got a sense of humor. You wouldn't know that until you sit down and talk with him, but he's very bright, uh, very, uh, what I call is very, you know, self-centered in, in his self and what he thinks. He's an inner thinker. I mean, he's a deep thinker. He says some things in the office. You go, wow, man, Zach, man, that's really awesome. Uh, and he cares about people. I mean, he's involved. I mean, he care about people. He care about equality. He care about uh, how people feel. And I, I think that's really, say, his compassion he has for him for people and for himself. So Zach is not only an you know, outstanding football player, but he's a great person. And I think that goes back to mom and dad, you know, in the sense of how they raised him and brought him up. And, but what a joy to have just to sit around and talk to him. You get so many light things that he says that you go, wow, that is pretty impressive, Zach. And so I like spending my time with Zach because he allows you to calm down because he has that common feel about what he does. Thanks. Thanks, Larry. You got it. Next up, Dave Biddle, 24-7 Sports with Tony Gerdman on deck. Dave? Hi, Larry. Hey, Dave. Who are the top three guys at the three tech right now? I, I know you said Antoine Jackson moves around to both, but who, who are maybe some of the, the top three guys, maybe some of the guys that are in the mix to be in the top three? Well, I think we got you know, got a couple of guys. You know, I, I really like uh, Jaden McKenzie. He's starting to make a push right now. Uh, he's done a great job in camp. He's up about 285, and they show the value that he can do it. Jerron Cage, another guy that we could play the three technique. Uh, that we can rotate in there. And then we just got to wait and see how, you know, the other guy, Jerron and uh, Haskell, you know, goes through his recovery, how that goes. So I think we got bodies that can go in there and play. Uh, we just got to see how things go forward. Go on forward. And at the one tech, is, is Tommy the starter? And then who would be the, the top guys kind of behind Tommy? Yeah, so what we're doing there, Tommy is there, and this guy's had a great camp also. And then you have Jerron Cage, you can go both sides. Uh, and we work in Ty Hammond to a little bit at nose guard and get him a chance to see what he can do. Uh, so I think we got enough bodies in there. We just got to see who's going to merge as the player as we go forward with two weeks left. Thanks, Larry. I appreciate sure. it. Yeah, you got it. Next up, Tony Gerdman with Buckeye Scoop and Stephen Means on deck. Tony? Larry, a, a couple quick things. Hey, Tony. You mentioned some of, a, some of the defensive ends moving inside. Is that just on third downs, passing downs, or is that a possibility on, on running downs as well? Uh, it could be, you know, we don't know really sure yet. You know, with Nebraska is the running team, so we got to be prepared for the running game going forward. So we'll see how that pays, plays out as we go forward. But I would say there's like between Javante Baptiste and Tyler Friday and 
Cooper and then Zach, it really give a good chance to, to do a lot of things, those five guys. So I, I'm looking forward to see how we fit as we go forward. And then you mentioned Haskell isn't quite cleared. Do you, like, when do you expect that to happen? Could he miss a couple of games? What, what kind of time frame do you think we're looking yeah, at? Yeah, we don't know yet. You know, he's a very sensitive area that he's, uh, he was on. Uh, injury so we just kind of wait and see and let the doctors tell us when he's ready to go and he's in practice he just things he cannot do uh, but he is in practice every day he's really engaged he's in the meetings and uh, he's in great spirit uh, and so we just kind of wait and see how the doctors you know release him. he has not been released yet so we'll see how it goes what went through your mind when when that whole thing happened uh scary very very scary uh it was a very shocking move for all of us you know I mean? uh very blessed for him how lucky he is Again, it goes back to what I said earlier, but what a great doctor at, at, at the medical center, right? Just really un, 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 incredible people and what they did and to get in the position he is right now. But uh, it, it, was, it was scary, you know, to get a phone call that, that late at night and, and know that one of your players has been you know, shot. And, you know, but I, I'm just so thankful and blessed that he's in the position he is. He's recovering very well. He's in good spirits. and. Um, just one of those moments you care for the rest of your life, how close it is, you know, from grieving life and you know, life being taken away from you at such a young age. That's all. Thank you. Next up, Stephen Means with Cleveland.com and Tim May on deck. Stephen? Hi, Stephen. Hey, Larry. How you doing? Um, Good. In, in 2017, you, mm -hmm. you seemed that you just had a lot of depth at, on the, at both edge rushers positions. I think you had four guys who had plus 500 snaps. Less last season, you didn't necessarily need that because I mean, you had a Heisman Trophy finalist. So he's probably not coming off the field anyway. It seems like in this room this year, it's closer to what 2017 was as far as the depth. I guess what was the benefit of that level of depth in 2017 and how you see that playing out in 2020? Uh, yeah, I think you're right on. I think 2017 was a year we had a lot of depth. I think with Cherie Smith and Zach and all the guys I mentioned earlier. It gives us a chance to have really, you know, really five good guys can go in and play with a backup, either Noel Ryder or Gary on Henry as we go forward. Uh, but it gives me a chance to move those guys around. And we can play fresh. I'm really big in having guys play fresh and playing fast. And that gives us a chance to do that. And so I'm kind of, I'm glad you said that, but I think 2017 was that year that we did that. And I think this year is going to look about the yeah. same way. And no doubt about it with those guys. And then, and then from a recruiting standpoint, when you're trying to close out a class and maybe there's a guy in your that you would like to add in your room, but obviously as the NCAA stated, you're not allowed to get the kid on campus. Mm -hmm. um, what's the difficulty in trying to, you know, finish off or finish off that relationship and kind of close that? Just the difficulty in recruiting a kid like that. I, I think you're right. You know, the biggest thing, I you know, get kids on campus, that's tough, you know, with the pandemic. And so you have to do a really good try to take the campus to them opportunity to see that, you know what I mean? And so really it's about how the kids see us, how you think you can fit into our system. So you try to share that with, you know, exactly how we fit and how you fit in our defensive scheme and what we're looking for. Uh, but, you know, there's nothing like being on campus for you personally get to meet the people that you want to be around. So that's probably the toughest thing. Thanks, Larry. Yeah. Next up, Tim May with the Tim May podcast and Letterman Row and Pat Murphy on deck. Tim? Yeah, three quickies, Larry. Uh, number one, uh, uh, did you opt into the uh, five percent contract cut, uh, like uh, uh, Gene Smith said that the contracted guys out there they were gonna, they couldn't force you guys to take a cut? But I'm just wondering, did you and just uh, and and if you did, why 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 was the uh, why did you opt in? Yeah, I did opt in. I think it's the right thing to do. It is the right thing to do. It's a great athletic department. Gene Smith is a great athletic director, and it's the right thing to do. And so I didn't have hesitate, you know, when, I, when he told us that what was going to happen. So, yeah, I did opt in, and uh, I'm glad I did. And uh, number two, uh, uh, a couple of the linebackers mentioned last week that coaches have been on them to uh, watch the last three games of last year when things seemed to kind of slip, things got a little bit loose defensively and stuff. And how much have you harped on that with your guys? But m mainly, what were – what was learned, I guess, over those last three games, but the last game especially, about what could be tightened up with the defense this year? You know, the biggest thing, Browns, you know, giving up big plays. When you give up big plays on defense, uh, game changes, no question about that. And so you have to limit the big plays. And yeah. we had some big explosive plays in that game, the last game we played. And that's something we have to look at and try to find the fix. And I think the season go on, like everything else, you do something very well, teams try to find a way to take advantage of what you do. And I think at the end of the season, you know, team looked at us and say, we can attack a uh, high safe this way, you know. And so what we have to do is look at those mistakes we made last year, the big plays we gave up, and 
and try not to repeat that. And so I, I think that's what we're doing right now, working on those uh, that concept of really fixing our big play that happened last year, because we'll probably see them again this year, no question about it. It's a copy. Gotcha. One, one last quickie. You mm -hmm. know, you're a veteran coach. Uh, mm -hmm. What have you had to switch up, change about just regular day-to-day -day practices this last, you know, since y'all have gone to full pads and stuff? What have you altered, et cetera, you know, just in your routine uh, with these players about what you're doing and maybe what you're not doing like you used to do in the past? Can you give an example or two? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is touching and hugging your players. You know, I mean, I think I'm a on on you know, I'm a <laughs> on touch guy. I, I like to hug my players, be around them, and and uh, you just can't do it. I think that's the toughest thing for me that you can't be as close as you want to be to your players. So we're always elbow bumping. You know, I mean, that's you know, you can't show true love, but uh, but I'm one of those guys I like to express my feelings. How I feel about it. Now. That's probably the toughest thing, and then always talking in the distance. And then wearing a mask for all the right reason you're wearing a mask, but now you're in the football field and then you have to continue to do that. You coach from a distance almost, you know what I mean? I'm standing five, six feet away, you yell at my guy as opposed to being up close, you know? So I think that's the thing that's been the toughest to me to learn how to do is to control my emotion with my players. And I don't know what's going to happen game time, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. then I can stay away from uh, jumping them and celebrating with them. So I think that's the toughest thing, Tim. It hasn't caused you to curse yet, has it? Yeah, that'll, that'll never happen to them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, man. <laughs> okay, we're down to our final two individuals uh, for, for Coach Johnson. Uh, next up, Pat Murphy with 24-7 Sports and Spencer Holbrook on deck. Pat? Hey, Pat. Hey, Larry. How are you? Good, thanks. Um, similar to Stephen's question a couple questions ago about the depth at, at defensive end, is this one of those years where – Maybe you don't list, I mean, you, you list it, but a starter doesn't matter. These guys are going to see plenty of snaps as you rotate through like you have in the past. You're right on. That's what's going to happen. We had a conversation the other day. I mean, you get five guys, and they all can be started anywhere in the country. And so I'm going to treat them that way. They're all five starters for me right now. And so we are going to do a, and a good job and make sure each guy get a chance to start as we go through the season. Uh, but I could be pleased where we are right now. The five guys, they're only going to keep them all healthy. You know, from Tariq all the way down to Devontae Baptiste, these guys have done a really great job and extremely work. You know, you talk about working hard. Uh, I just can't speak the vibe how hard these guys have worked. So they, they all deserve a chance to be starters, and they will be. And when you, you've done this before, obviously, so when you have that conversation with guys, mm -hmm. you know, especially guys that were highly recruited, want to play a lot, how, how do you get them to buy into the, the rotational idea of, of what this year will probably look like? Again, you know, I think the biggest thing that I saw is that you can't play 60 plays at full speed. No one can, you know, but you can play 30, 35 plays at full speed. And, and every play, play you put on videotape is a high speed play. And I think it helps them. And so I think our guys understand that they all want to be on the field, but they know there's a certain time as we go forward. Some guys are going to emerge now. Some guys are going to emerge and push themselves ahead. And if that happens, we'll, we'll make a change. But right now, I think uh, they all have opportunity starters. And I think they understand how that's going to work out. They're all going to play. You know, where's 30, 35 plays a game. We'll just see how it goes. But they are going to play. Yep. Thanks, Larry. Yep. And final questions from Spencer Holbrook, Letterman Row. Spencer? Hey, Spencer. Who's that? Yeah. Yeah. A uh, great question. Yeah, you know, what you saw Tom in the ice here, you know, your nose guards, I mean, we don't look for a nose guard, a lot of pass rush because they get double team all the time. You know, Devon Hammond, what he did at nose guard is really unheard of. You got eight sacks or seven to eight sacks in the nose guard position. That's tough to do when you get double team. Tommy has the same kind. He's powerful. He's strong. He's athletic. Uh, he, he'll have a chance to rush the pass rush to go up forward. You know, with limited plays, you don't get a lot of chance. Now we're playing 40, 45 plays a game. He'll have some opportunity to rush the pass rush. But I'm very confident he has the ability to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is really, you know, very seldom do we go back and get a guy who committed to us and decommit and go to somewhere else and then come back to it. That's tough to do. Uh, and, but Antoine came with a great attitude and he worked extremely hard since he's been here. And I said to him on the day, this is, his, this is his moment. This is his time. He's had a great preseason camp. He really has. And uh, I hope that he continue to progress. But we expect great things from him going to the fall. Uh, and so, but Antoine's done a great job for us. 
Great. Coach Johnson, thank you so much for your time today. Have a great afternoon and an excellent practice. Thanks again. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys.
the word for the day class is onomatopoeia. I repeat, onomatopoeia.
Jerry, any updates on um, credentials or seating capacity in the press box? Say that again, whoever is listening that. Any updates on any updates on credentials, press box, all of that good stuff? The only update is that it's an, an update is still to come. Um, no, I'm working on it. Um, we're still need confirmation from an airflow survey. Um, we're also working with Columbus Public Health or the Board of Health on numbers. Um, you know, I think I've told you guys in, in the past that, you know, like you know, everywhere, I mean, we are, we're going to be severely, severely um, uh, affected in terms of numbers. I mean, in the past, I've had 225 uh, available seats in the press box. And if we're fortunate to get 20% of that, that's a little over 40 seats. And uh, I'm going to need to give uh, a quarter of that to visitors. So what, what we're looking at is, is about 30 seats for media. So um, one, one credential for as many outlets as, as I can credential. But clearly the vast majority of organizations uh, uh, will not be in the press box this year. Um, I'm still waiting to see on also on... Uh, the exact terminology and numbers for uh, photo passes, um, field access, that kind of thing. Um, I'm, I'm going to get, a, I think, a more than what I was anticipating, but this may be 20. And we're talking TV stations, sideline reporters, photographers, videographers. So uh, we're, we're severely we're going to be severely depleted in terms of numbers uh, at Ohio stadium. Uh, obviously there won't be any um, post game press conferences and uh, everything will be done by zoom. Hey, Mike, set him up with the... Oh no, he should be good. Hold on one second there guys. Yeah, sorry, sorry about that, guys. Um, uh, Tyreek just showed up, so we'll we'll get you on the horn with him. Uh, but yeah, so I, I anticipate uh, hopefully by the end of the week. What is today, Wednesday? Um, yeah, by the by the end of the week, that I'll have some information to you. Um, uh, I, I'm not I'm not going to accept credentials. We're not using our sports system credential request this year because uh, again, we're talking about fifty to seventy credentials uh, total. Um, actually, I've got I've got several players here right now. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to get uh, I'm going to just ask for for one question um, uh, per individual, um, and we're, we'll get about six to eight questions per athlete, and then we're going to rotate someone else in. We got three guys here, so we're going to open up the floor right now um, with Tyreek Smith um, up first, Andy Anders from Press Pros and Jeremy Birmingham on deck. Andy? Sorry. Uh, yes, Terry. Um, I'm interested in, uh, you've been playing with Tommy Togi now for a few years. Um, he's going to be kind of the guy at One Tech this year. How have you seen him kind of grow into that role? Um, well, Tommy, man, ever since we came in, ever since I came in, he's been like uh, kind of a leader on the D-line. Like you can always see the leader, uh, potential uh, things in him. And man, just from then, he's been just growing every day. Every day, Tommy comes to work, um, super strong, super smart on the field, you know, knows his job. And um, he's always uh, doing his thing and helping us too. So, yeah, he's been growing. All right, thank you. Next up, Jeremy Birmingham with Letterman Row and Nathan Baird on deck. Jeremy? Hey, Tyreek, at the risk of sounding simplistic, how important is this year for you? I mean, after the last couple of years of uh, some nagging injuries and stuff like that, how vital is this year for you? And what do you think you've done to get yourself ready to, for this stage? Um, well, I think this year is really important. I mean, it's my junior year um, and I've been hurt a little bit, but 
um, you know, I've just been, you know, taking my time on my body, you know, trying to uh, go about it different, you know, trying to eat different, you know, make sure that uh, I'm good off the field uh, in terms of, you know, my injuries and stuff like that. Just getting in the treatment room extra. Um, and then in terms of football, you know, I've just been, you know, just working hard, trying to um, just hone in on what Coach Jay is saying and listen to him and uh, learn all I can from him and, you know, do extra, watch extra film and uh, everything as far as I, I can go to uh, get better. Thanks, man. Please don't tell anybody what you're doing different as far as eating, okay? Because I don't want it to turn into a giant thing. <laughs> Next up, Nathan Baird with Cleveland.com and Bill Landis on deck. Nathan? Yeah, no diet questions for me. Uh, Tyreek, I'm curious, you know, social justice issues, they were a really prominent thing with this team early in the summer. And then obviously everything that happened with the Big Ten maybe got pushed to the forefront a little bit. Do you expect that to be something that yourself, other players kind of bring back in a public way once the season begins? Um, yeah, I think it never left us for real. Um, you know, we always, um, you know, just looking out and trying to bring that, uh, bring that into everything we're doing. I mean, uh, social justice is a big topic in today's world. Um, what's going on is, you know, not, not right. And we know that. So, my mom, you know, uh, our parents, you know, all the players, you know, we never, we never really forget what's happening, and we always, you know, keeping that with us, and you know, everywhere we go. Next up, Bill Landis with Brendan Gulick on deck. Bill, hey Tyreek, uh, I think before last season, you seemed um, kind of fixated on on your stance and and your get off, and, and kind of perfecting that a little bit. What's, what's kind of in the crosshairs for you now this preseason? What are, what are some of the things that you're trying to perfect as you try to, you know, improve your technique? Um, I'm trying to, you know, become more of a student of the game, you know, see stuff, see a lot more things before they happen. Um, you know, trying to get my run fits down. Uh, I'm always trying to, you know, get my get off better. Um, you know, I'm just trying to do everything I can, you know. Uh, I'm watching tape after practice, you know, seeing little things with Coach Jay or, or – uh, looking at a uh, tape with him and seeing what I could do better, you know, just all the types of things, my hands, violent hands, you know, get off, uh, low pads, all that. Next up, Brendan Gulick, Buckeyes now on Sports Illustrated with Austin Ward on deck. Brendan? Hey, Tyreek, I was wondering if you might be able to give us a, a little bit of perspective on what life is like right now for you, uh, trying to balance everything that's going on with, football and COVID and the delay and class. Can you, can you maybe give us some 10,000 foot view on what a, a normal day looks like for you right now? Um, normal day, I mean, we got a class, uh, everything's online. So, I mean, I get up and lift, um, then I go to class online. Um, we got a little break in between. Uh, so I get some treatment you know, throughout the day and then come back to the Woody. Uh, get ready uh, for practice, you know, get some more treatment, you know, get a, get some meals in and get ready for practice, go to men's and then back at it. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Uh, my phone was ringing. Uh, next up, Austin Ward, Letterman Row with Dan Hope on deck. Austin? Hi, Rick. Uh, Chase has talked many times about how you know, that you would be the guy to take the torch and how confident, you know, he was that you would be able to meet that first round Rushman standard. Now that it's, it's your turn. How many conversations like that did you have with Chase, you know, to, to handle that role? And, and are you ready for this moment to, to take it? Um, you know, I talk to Chase a lot and he's always just telling me, you know, just trust my technique, you know, trust in coach Johnson and, you know, and trust the system. So he, every day, he's just, you know, every time I talk to him, he's just telling me, you know, just be myself, you know, trusting what Coach Johnson has to say, and then it'll all take itself from there. So, um, you know, I just let God handle it itself. You know, I work as hard as I can work, and I do what I can do to make myself better and to help the team be better. And then um, I just hope everything falls into place. I'm not sure who's next. Who's next, guys? Mm -hmm. Go with me, Dan Hope. Yeah. Go ahead, Dan. I'm sorry, Dan Hope with the Eleven Warriors. 
Tyreek, Larry was saying before that, you know, he thinks you guys have five defensive ends who are all good enough to start anywhere in the country. What's it like being a part of that group and having all you guys to push each other? Uh, it's, I think it's great. Um, I think everybody, you know, can learn from everybody. Everybody's different. Everybody rushes different. Everybody, you know, has different strengths and weaknesses. And, you know, we're all uh, like brothers in, in the D-line unit. And, you know, in the five DNs, we're, we're really, really tight. And, you know, when we can uh, take constructive criticism and, you know, we mess up on something, you know, we're good enough and we're tight enough that we can tell each other, hey, man, you know, you got to do this better, or, you know, without it taking it personal. And I think that goes a long way because we can uh, only get better and better from there. The sky's the limit for us. Thanks, Darius. We got one final question for Tyreek. Uh, this is from Bill Rabinowitz, the Columbus Dispatch. Uh, yeah, Tyreek. Um, how different is Zach Harrison this year than last? How good can he be? Um, man, Zach, he's great. Uh, you know, I'm, I always can learn from him too when I watch him. Uh, his get off, um, his uh, student of the game, the way he uh, takes the uh, media into the field. He's just um, on point all the time. And, you know, he keeps everybody else on their toes too. And, you know, his speed, quickness, his uh, strength. He's uh, always growing, you know, always working hard. And um, he's uh, one of the leaders on the D-line already. You know, you can already see those tendencies in him. And you know, I already know um, he's going to take over. You know, he's going to be the one because he's uh, he got that mindset and that mentality. So that's been great uh, for everybody. Thanks, Tyreek. Ty Tyreek, thank you so much for your time. Have a great practice today. Folks, we're going to bring in Antoine Jackson now. All right, folks, we are going to open up the floor for Antoine Jackson. I'm going to start with Dan Hope because I know he had a, uh, a specific request for Antoine. So we'll lead off with Dan Hope from 11 Warriors with Tony Girdman on deck. Dan? Hey, Antoine. I, I know that you know, you're a guy who came in with pretty high expectations and you know maybe you haven't played as much as you had hoped coming in. But sounds like you know Larry thinks that you're a guy who's going to play a really big role this year. So just how big is this for you to finally get that opportunity to really play a large role in that rotation? Um, I think it's very big for me uh, because, like, coming in uh, after my junior, like, coming in my junior year, uh, just looking up to, you know, Draymond and uh, actually Haskell, too, because Haskell was here before me. And uh, playing a little bit last year behind Jay Sean, it's just a big role playing that three technique, uh, holding the gaps, make sure the ball don't get ran through. And, uh, pass rushing like Coach Jay likes. So I think it's a big role to play a three technique for the Ohio State. Thanks, Antoine. Uh, next up, uh, Tony Girdman, Buckeye Scoop, with Tim May on deck. Tony? Antoine, how difficult is it to uh, like master and pick up all of the little things that separates good from great on the defensive line? I think it's very big with, with Coach Jay. Uh, you know, he's on, our, he's on our butts every day about the little things and our steps, our, you know, technique. And, uh, you know, I, I, I just got done watching film again for the second time, second or third time, just looking at all the things that he uh, critiqued us on. So I think, you know, technique is very big with Coach Jay, and I just try to uh, go a little bit by a little bit every day with him. Next up. Tim May, the Tim May podcast and Letterman Row with Andy Anders on deck. Tim? Antoine, if you had to sum up your career to this point, how would you sum it up? Meaning, you know, the journey you've been on and then at Ohio State dealing with some injuries, et cetera, and things like that. But just what is the word you would use to sum it up? And just, you know, just give it to me in a few words, maybe. I feel like I have to do better. Uh, I have to get better every day. I just have to keep grinding to, you know, reach my potential like like I want to. That's what I feel like I need to do. I just need to go go harder and, 
and grind harder to get to where I want to be. Thank you. No Next up, Andy Anders with Press Pros and Jeremy Birmingham on deck. Andy? Yes, Antoine. Uh, Coach Johnson mentioned you could be switching back and forth between the one and three in this defense. What's the difficulties of doing that, and uh, what's the difference in how you'll approach those two spots? I feel like it's not really that difficult to play the one technique and the three tech. Uh, I mean, one tech, you got to be, you know, you got to be that he man like he wants to, like uh, like Devon Hampton was last year and like how Tommy is right now. And the three, I mean, Coach Jay had me playing both of them from starting last year. He, you know, he likes guys that can play, you know, one and the three tech just to have, be more versatile. So it's kind of a big role to him. And I, I, I really like that he trusts me to play the one technique and the three technique. Thank you. And final two questions for uh, Antoine. Uh, first coming from Jeremy Birmingham with Letterman Row and Pat Murphy on deck. Jeremy? Hey, Antoine, I don't know if you know this, but uh, Coach Johnson sort of outed you earlier as publicly or as decommitting from Ohio State in your high school recruitment. And then when you committed to Auburn, and then when you came back, um, I, I guess the question is, what was it about the relationship you had with Coach Johnson and with Ohio State that was so unique that after you decommitted from the school, you still wanted to come back after transferring out of Auburn? Uh, it was very special because he built a relationship with me, but also my dad. Uh, my dad was like just kind of coming off of uh, a stroke coming off that last year. And uh, he made a, a real good connection with him. And I really loved, I really liked that. But I just felt like I was just young and I just didn't understand or I just didn't really get it. Cause my dad was really telling me, you know, Ohio State, Ohio State, but nothing was wrong with Auburn. Auburn was still a good school. Uh, you know, just being there, I was just really thinking about Coach Jay a lot and how he could develop me. And uh, we built that relationship still after when I went to uh, junior college, we were still been building that connection. And I really just love him and uh, love him and Coach Meyer for really bringing me back in. And it really means a lot to me uh, to give me a second chance and really don't nobody give, I mean, get that second chance. So uh, Coach Jay said I was his first uh, to ever do that to go back and get somebody. So I really feel kind of special. And I really owe that to him this year. Thank you. And final questions for uh, Antoine Jackson come from uh, Pat Murphy, 24 seven sports. Pat. Hey Antoine, we've heard a lot of good things about what this offensive line could be this year. I'm curious from, from your position, you, you see these guys more frequently, especially now that you have pads on. What's your take on, on the guys across the ball from you early on here? Oh, man, let's not get started on the auto line. Uh, Nick Batiste doing really good uh, stepping up in that at, at right tackle or, or, or left tackle where they where they play at. And, you know, going against, you know, uh, All-American at with Wyatt Davis, you know, we both wear the same number. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a war every day, uh, double teams and, you know, going one-on-one -on -one against them. It's making me very – it's making me much better as a, a pass rusher and a run stopper. And, you know, the rest of the old line, they're doing very good and can't wait for them to knock people out. Thank you. Antoine, thank you so much. Have a great day and a great practice this afternoon. Right. Thank you, everybody. Next up, folks, will be Tommy Togiai, and we're going to open the questioning with Spencer Holbrook from Letterman Row with Bill Landis on deck. Uh, hold on one moment there, Spencer. Spencer, you're up. Yeah, so from Devon, it was really big help him and BB just giving me, showing me like how it's done really, uh, giving me the tips and pointers on like how to rush from the one technique and then also from three technique as well. And then Coach Jay uh, as well, just showing me how to use my hands and be able just to be able to use moves on the guard and center. Next up, Bill Landis from The Athletic with Nathan Baird on deck. Bill? Hey, Tommy, uh, just following up on that, how hard is it to kind of balance, I guess, the desire to want to get upfield and get after the quarterback with making sure you're holding your gap and, and you're not sort of over pursuing? 
Yeah, so Coach Jay always teaches us just to, I mean, your get off should always look the same and pass and run. So your get off will always be the same because that's the way it should be. So your get off wouldn't be, shouldn't be different from the run and from the pass. So I think that's kind of my answer to that. Next up, Nathan Baird with Cleveland.com and Brendan Gulick on deck. Nathan? Hey, Tommy, we've heard for a while, uh, at least the, the scuttlebutt last year was that you were the strongest guy on the team. Do you feel like a, a challenge to kind of keep that crown and uh, are, are guys coming after you to try to take it? Uh, I don't really chase that one, like chasing to that title, really. It's just one they gave to me, I guess. But no, I'm not really concerned about that title at all. I'm just... I've uh, been working on the field, trying to uh, better myself on playing and stuff. Next up, Brendan Gulick. Buckeyes now on Sports Illustrated with Austin Ward on deck. Brendan? Hey, Tommy, I'm interested. Uh, the, the guys that you see on the other side of the line of scrimmage in practice every day, is there any one of them in particular that has made you better? And, and what are those challenges that you've been really working on that uh, – you know, maybe they've they've exposed parts of your game you're trying to improve. Yeah, I think the whole like part of the O line inside, especially Josh Myers, Wyatt Davis, and Harry Miller, they challenge me every day in practice, just because of uh, especially Wyatt and Josh going against them every day in practice. Uh, those are two of the best O line I'll probably see probably this whole year. To see them every day in practice, and just going against them really help. I got. Uh, keep my pad level low, especially with those two, because they're so big and everything. Got to be able to lock out on them as well. Next up, Austin Ward with Letterman Rowe and Dan Hope on deck. Austin? Tommy, um, you, you talked about learning, you know, from Devon and, and BB and those guys. And, and obviously they got a bunch of snaps as veterans ahead of you last year. What is sort of your expectation for how much heavier the workload will be for you, uh, how many snaps are you expecting to play now that you're you're sort of stepping to the forefront as that leader? Uh, I was expecting to play as many snaps as I need to. That's Coach Jay likes to rotate a lot, so I'm uh, I'm ready to step up too to take as many snaps as I need to be able to help help our team out, and just I'm ready for to step up to take that leadership role and be able to contribute. Next up, Dan Hope with Eleven Warriors and Bill Rabinowitz on deck. Dan. Hey, Tommy, who are some of the other guys at defensive tackle that you really think are stepping up to provide depth for you guys this year? Uh, I think Ty Hamilton and uh, Jaden McKenzie have come a long way of progressing, especially Ty fast since he's only coming this is freshman year. And I think Jaden has stepped up in a big way too uh, with his hands and his lockout and just his uh, attitude has changed, I think, going into this year. And then Ty uh, – He's come a long way with the plays and everything, and he's starting to get into it. Thanks, Tommy. Next up, Bill Rabinowitz with the Columbus Dispatch and Tony Gerdman on deck. Bill? Hey, Tommy. Uh, you guys obviously lost some key players. Chase Young is a, obviously a generational talent. How confident are you guys as a unit that you are going to play at the standard Ohio State that you used to with, on the defensive line? Yeah, I, I'm really excited for this year to see how we, as as our collective unit, as we to step up and take this challenge of seeing how the guys we've lost. But every year we going Coach Jay always says raise the raise the bar, raise the standard. So we're gonna keep we're gonna get after this year and try to raise the bar even more. Thank you. Tommy, you mentioned Wyatt and Josh. Can you give us an update on Harry Miller? Not sure how much you get to go against him there, but uh, he's got a ton of expectations. And uh, just wondering what your thoughts have, uh, have been going against him. Yeah, no, Harry's been really good so far. I mean, especially challenging me too as well. And I know we make each other better going against each other in practice. And I think he's uh, gone a long way since his freshman year to this year. He's gone a lot better. And final questions for Tommy Togi. I come from Tim May with the Tim May podcast and Letterman Row. Tim? Thank you very much, Jerry. Uh, Tommy, a lot, of, a lot of attention is on that middle of the defensive line. And can you guys step up, et cetera, and find that depth? You kind of touched on this a while ago, but are you guys paying attention to uh, sort of the attention that's being paid to y'all right now on uh, – 
in fact, whether you have the depth there to uh, to maintain, so to speak. Yeah, I think we do have great depth, especially we have a lot of our young players that have stepped up and played really well throughout practice this year. And I think and the leaders, uh, the older guys have done an incredible job. Me and Antoine and Haskell and stuff like that, done a great job of leading the younger guys and showing them the, the way, like how we do things on the D-line and stuff like that. Name one of those young guys that's really stepped up in your mind. Uh, I would say probably inside would be Jaden McKenzie and Ty Hamilton come a long way. Thank you. Great. Tommy, thanks so much for your time uh, this afternoon. Uh, have a great day and a, and a great practice. Thanks right. again. Thank you. Sorry about that flurry there, guys. We did have a 15 minute, uh, we had a, a schedule and, uh, but we had a schedule. <laughs> Hopefully we'll get two of these next three here uh, real shortly. Are we still getting Zach? Yes. Jerry, regarding uh, credentials, should get to the faucet or your house? <laughs> Say that again, Tony. Regarding credentials, should we send gifts to the faucet or to your personal <laughs> I, can't, I can't accept gifts. <laughs> No, it's you, you guys know you you know what's going on and around the country and but like I said uh, you know I was on calls with uh, with Doug Le Maurice and with Football Writers Association members and with other SIDs and uh, and the whole goal was to try to get as many different organizations uh, credentialed uh, you know obviously versus a, a smaller number and, and and that'll be the goal and uh, I'll do everything I can and. Uh, but again, there are there are finite numbers that we're working with, and they're and and they're not very big. But we'll do the best we can. Is is that twenty five percent you mentioned for the road? Also, is that a Big Ten thing? Do you think? Yeah, it is a it is a recommendation. Uh, uh, now it's just that. To, go ahead, there, Mike. Uh, 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 just a recommendation of twenty five percent of your of your seats. Um, you know, all of all of our home opponents may not use, um, you know, all 10 credentials, uh, <coughs> excuse me. And if, if that's the case, we'll, um, you know, we'll, we'll allow other people in, um, but we'll just, we'll just have to see. So, all right, we're going to open up the, the floor uh, for Javante Jean Baptiste. And uh, I just lost my page. So trying to think who's up next. We're going to go with uh, up next, Andy Anders from press pros with, Pat Murphy on deck. Andy? Uh, yeah, so Tommy Tokia kind of uh, stepping up as one of the guys on the defensive line that this year will be, you know, the main guy up run tech. I'm curious as a leader, how have you seen him grow and take more of a leadership role on the defensive line? Well, you could tell his growth by how he plays and just how he approaches the meeting room. And he's starting to take those young guys and carry them with him. He's starting to be a, a great role model for Ty Hamilton and just pushing him every day. Do you see him as more of a vocal guy or is he more of a lead by example type of leader? I feel like Tommy's a more of a lead by example. Gotcha. How, do, how does he demonstrate that? Um, just by doing everything that he's supposed to do and just like running to the ball. It's just the little stuff that matters and just giving those tips on technique and how to, how to be uh, right when you play. Thank you. Next up, Pat Murphy, 24-7 Sports with Spencer Holbrook on deck. Pat? Hey, Javante. We've seen in the past, and I'm sure you've seen it too, even before you got here, the success that these defensive ends can have with the rotation Coach Johnson likes. Now that you're here and you're a part of that, how much does that really benefit in terms of being fresh, those 30, 35 plays that he likes to talk about going at 100% for you? 
I feel that being that we're in this rotation is the best for us. Uh, being fresh is the best thing because when that ta that tackle is getting tired, then it's just a new guy and it's a, it's a new face for him to go every time. And he's like, whoa, he doesn't know what he got himself into. Thank you. Next up, Spencer Holbrook, Letterman Row with Bill Landis on deck. Spencer. Um, it's, you just come to understand that it's, it's perfectly fine and you build a bond with the others. And uh, like I answered in the past question, when, when it comes to that rotation, your, your body's feeling good, you're fresh. And with those plays, you make the best of them. So then it really just comes down to be the best for us. So then you're able to see that, okay, I may, I may rotate in here and there, but with these plays, I feel good. And what you put on film shows for it, so you'll be fine. Next up, Bill Landis with The Athletic and Nathan Baird on deck. Bill? Hey, Javante. Um, it seems like you've been kind of waiting your, your time a little bit here, and I know you've, you've sort of put a lot of work into to getting bigger to, to play your position and, and adding some, some good weight on. Just what, what's your mindset now then going into this season, knowing that, you know, physically you've put that work in and, and now there's openings for you to, to really get an opportunity? Uh, right now I'm just focused on – Improving, improving techniques and uh, staying, staying more sharp and keeping my body up and, and staying healthy. You know what I'm saying. Next up, Nathan Baird, Cleveland.com. Sorry about that, Nathan. With Austin Ward on deck, Nathan. Yeah, Javante, I, I kind of had a similar question. Just how do you feel like a different athlete now than you did when you got here and maybe even compared to even a year ago at this time? Because I know that that's been sort of a constant development to make you, I guess, more of a traditional defensive end in some ways, just physically. So how do you, how do you feel like a different athlete now? Uh, now I feel, being that I have more weight on me, I feel like I'm more stronger. And what, it, what comes with strength, you get more explosive. So I feel that in the all in all, I've been doing real good with everything. Next up, Austin Ward with Letterman Row and Brendan Gulick on deck. Austin? Javante, you, you might notice the, the theme here that we're all curious about, you know, the way that you've bulked up and the changes that you've made since you first arrived. When you're with Coach Mick, is it just the strength program? It was, was it things that you had to do to eat, a combination? Like, how is it that you've transformed – uh, to what you look like now from, from when you arrived? Uh, I had to eat more, um, just a higher calorie intake. And then being that, being here at Ohio State, our, our workouts are real good. So you just put in the work in the weight room, eat, and then you should all be fine. I mean, it comes to the point where it gets hard to kind of like, you'll put that weight on, but then it kind of gets hard to maintain it. But once you get past that hump, you're, you're perfectly fine. Next up, Brendan Gulick, Buckeyes now on Sports Illustrated with Dan Hope on deck. Brendan? Javante, this might seem like an odd question, but if you were going to give a scouting report on yourself, how, how would you scout yourself? How would I scout myself? Yeah, if you were, if you were going to tell us what, uh, what you think your strengths and weaknesses are or maybe how, how an offensive lineman could uh, attack you or, or where they would be vulnerable, what, what would you say some of those things are? Well, <clears throat> I guess I could say that uh, being that I'm not the heavies and that they could say like they could try try attacking me more, but I don't I don't feel like that'll work because uh, with that comes with, with that comes my length, and I feel like in football length has a a very good leverage on your side. And then I say a strength would be, a mine would just be my speed. Last couple questions for Javante. Uh, up first, Dan Hope with 11 Warriors and Bill Rabinowitz on deck. Dan? Hey, Javante. 
who are some of the young defensive ends who have come along this this preseason? Is there anybody yeah. who's yeah. impressed you as somebody who could help you guys down the line? I would say um, when it comes to the young defensive ends, um, I would say no Potter's <clears throat> no Potter's doing he's doing pretty he's doing he's doing good. He's starting to come along more than where he was. And uh, Darion Henry, you know, he, he's still a freshman. But I feel once he gets everything down packed and control, he's going to be a good player here. Thanks, Javante. I'm wondering, I, I asked somebody earlier about this. How difficult is it to – get the little things down. I know you've had a, a long process from outside linebacker to defensive end, but all of the little things that Larry Johnson wants in your toolbox, like how difficult is that to master? I would say I'll say that's it's I'll say it's kinda hard because <clears throat> you you start doing something a certain way, so then it becomes repetition. But then as you begin to say like as the start of your get off, you uh, you spread your arms apart too far. So when you when you come across an O lineman, it's kind of harder to hit the arms because your your hands aren't really up as much. So it's just like certain things like that, like fixing and tweaking your steps that will make you really really a really good player. It's kind of like it's hard, but then once you get it, it's really good. Javante, thank you so much for your time this afternoon with our reporters. Have a great day and a great practice. Thank you guys. All right, folks, we're going to bring in Zach Harrison now, and we're going to open up the line of questioning uh, with Jared Smalley, WCMH Channel 4, with Bill Rabinowitz on deck. Then, Jared, hold on one second, and we'll get Zach here for you. All right, very good. Jared, you're up. All right. Hey, Zach. Um, I asked um, I asked Coach about this a little bit earlier, about the unique position you're in where uh, you're playing a, a position where a bunch of guys who have been high first-round draft picks have all gone to the NFL and made a career for themselves and made a, you know, a huge impression on Ohio State, and you're now stepping into that as the next guy. And he gave a very interesting answer about trying to manage that and, and – uh, those expectations, the pressure that comes with that. How do you as the player view that responsibility stepping into that role, but also trying to be yourself and the best version of yourself? I mean, yeah, those those guys who came before me, they're, they're a bunch of great players. And, and uh, like you said, there's a lot of expectations for me to do, you know, so-and-so numbers and so-and-so. And, so and, and honestly, I don't really try to think about that every day at practice. I just try to go out, you know, get better, work on my technique. And, and also it's not just – one person coming up next year. There's, there's a whole unit of guys who, who got something to prove. So we're all gonna, you know, come out in the first game. We're just gonna, you know, so we've been working on. Next up, Bill Rabinowitz with the Columbus Dispatch and Stephen Means on deck. Bill, hi Zach. Uh, how much of an honor was it to be named to that Big Ten anti-hate, anti-racism coalition, and what was involved with that? Uh, how important was that? Is that to you? Uh, that's huge. That's huge. That's something that's really important to me. You know, not just being more than a football player. I want to make a change. You know, I want to. I want to do something with this platform, and, and that that gave me the opportunity to do so. Um, we've, you know, we've got together a few times, and, and we just basically talked and, and talked about things that we can do better in, in each individual campus and, and, and stuff like that to to really keep the ball rolling on on these kind of issues. Were you, were you surprised it's only a sophomore that you were named to something like that? Um, I mean, it definitely was an honor. You know, I'm really, I'm really honored to be there. And but, I'm not really sure age really has anything to do with it. It's just kind of, you know, who, who they chose. Thanks, Thanks Zach. Yep. Next up, Stephen Means with Cleveland.com, and hey, Tony Gerben on deck. Stephen. Hey Zach. So Larry Johnson was talking about how the rotation this year might be a little similar to what it was in 2017 because there's just so much depth on the defensive end this year. As the guy who took the most snaps of anybody not named Chase Young, 
uh, on the defensive ends last year. What do you think some of the benefits are of having a deep rotation like that and then some of the cons of maybe if there are any? Um, the benefits of keep guys fresh, you know, you put me in the game, you can put Coop in the game, Vontae, all, all, the, all the other ends, all the D linemen, you can put all of them in the game. And, and there's not going to be a drop off. So let's say I, I play a few plays, I get tired. I, I feel like I can go hard those plays because I know the guy coming in right after me is going to, have no drop off, gonna go just as hard. He's gonna go hard for his plays and boom, right back in the game. So it's just gonna keep us all fresh and keep us all all, all ready to play as fast as we can when we can when we're in the game. Next up, Tony Gerdman with Buckeye Scoop and Austin Ward on deck. Tony? Hey Zach, how difficult is it to master the little things when it comes to the, the just the the various thing Larry, various things Larry Johnson wants you guys to be able to do with your hands, your feet, all of those minor details. Um, and yeah, it's it's a challenge, you know. Coach Jay pushes me every day at practice, like hard. He's he's on me every day, you know. Hands got to be up, all this you know, technique stuff, and, and it's something that you got to consciously think about every day and and to to get better at it. So when it does hit the field, it just becomes automatic. So just just hard work and, and him staying on me and me focusing on it, that's what what basically did it right there. Next up, uh, Austin Ward, Letterman Rowe, and Nathan Barrett on deck. Austin? Zach, when you look back at your at your freshman season, we all know how high the expectations are for somebody with your recruiting rankings, but it's still a different thing to try and produce as a freshman. When you look at it now, did you exceed what you expected for yourself? Did it surprise you at all, or how do you look at, at – Evaluate year one. Um, you know, I did a lot of good things my freshman year. Uh, you know, I started a few games, uh, had a few sacks, a few tackles, but there's always room to improve, and that's and that's something. We, looking back on the tape from last year, it's like I, there's so many things I could I could have done better, and that's what I'm focusing on most of this year is to really improve on the things that that last year were, were not as strong on my game. Next up, Nathan Baird with Cleveland.com and Bill Landis on deck. Nathan? Hey, Zach. You know, considering the expectations and how much – the expectations you got for yourself to, to, to be better this year, what were you doing during that kind of long, protracted time where you couldn't practice as a team? What were you doing individually to try to help yourself have the, the kind of sophomore jump that, that you want to have? You know, I was just, I was just working out where I could um, – trying to find a field and get some field work, just doing the drills that, you know, Coach Jay had taught us in my freshman year and do some of those drills on my own, just to try and, you know, work on my craft. Because I know there's, it, it was hard. There's not a lot of, no team activities and you weren't with the guys and there wasn't really any structure or coaches. So you had to kind of push yourself. And, and I feel like that's that's something that I did. I just I try to work on my craft outside of the building. Where, where'd you find a field? You're talking about just, when you say a field, you mean like at a school or are you talking about like a pasture? Any, any kind of anywhere, you know, backyard, anywhere, anywhere there's grass. I get some work in. I was going there. Last couple questions for Zach. Uh, first, Bill Landis with The Athletic and Patrick Murphy on deck. Bill? Zach, when, when you look back at last year, um, some of the things you were just talking about, to improve, what, what are one or two things maybe that are, that are front of mind for you that you'd like to improve on this year? Um. Uh, my pass rush is one of the big ones, and um, really just my consistency in my play, you know, not having ups and downs and just constantly playing at a high level. What what specifically with the with the pass rush? I know there's a lot that goes into that, and we know you're an explosive guy. You're obviously really long. Mm -hmm. um, what what are some of like the, the finer points, I guess, of the pass rush that you're focusing on? Um, like I said, honestly, all of it, just got to get my hands, feet, and hips. Those are, the, those are the key things of a pass rusher, and i got to get really sharp in all those skills. And final questions for Zach come from Patrick Murphy with 24-7 Sports. Patrick? Hey, Zach. Um, you obviously played with Chase last year. Coop's back. You mentioned this is, a, this is a unit. I'm curious how much you take from other guys. You know, you're obviously a talented kid, but still one of the younger guys. How much are you taking from, from guys that have been here, guys that are still here, each and every day? I mean, yeah, it's, it's a give and take. You know, that's what we do at practice. We all uh, coach each other up. So, like, I'll go I'll go a rep and then, and then all the other ends or coach me up on what I could have did better or somebody else will do a rep. Like, Tyler will get a rep, Tyreek will get a rep, Coop will get a rep. And I'm, I'm looking at them thinking, okay, what things 
can they improve? I'm, I just know if they get better, I'm going to have more success. And if I get better, they're going to have more success. And that's kind of how we view it. We're all just in this together. And we're all trying to, you know, improve each other as much as we can. So it's really just we got love for each other. That's what it comes down to at the end of the day. Appreciate it. Awesome. Zach, thanks so much for your time this afternoon. Have a great, great afternoon and a great practice. Thanks again. All right. Thank you all. Folks, we won't wait too long on Tyler. I'm not sure if meetings start at 2 or 2.30 today, but I'm going to take a walk around the
perimeter, the areas that I'm able to go into uh, uh, outside of this lobby here and uh, take a look for uh, Tyler. We, we may or may not get him, uh, but I, I don't want to hold you. Um, so I'll, I'll take a little um, scan to, to see if we can get him. And if not, that'll, that'll do it for, for today, but uh, I'll be back here shortly.
All right, guys, that was uh, Tyler Friday calling me there. He should be here uh, momentarily, and we'll knock out a half a dozen or so questions for, for him. Let's see where we'll start. Oh, I know where we're going to start. We're going to start with Tim May and follow that up with Andy Anders. Like I said, Tyler will be here just momentarily. Test one, two, three, test. All right, we're going to open up the questioning for Tyler Friday with Tim May from the Tim May Podcast, Letterman Row, and Andy Anders on deck. Tim? Thank you very much, Jerry. Hey, Tyler, how much are you guys, uh, uh, I don't know, looking back on the way the defense finished last year, the last three games especially, uh, a couple of linebackers said that the coaches had you guys, or had them at least looking at video from those last three games, the way things kind of got a little bit loose uh, near the end of the year. And how much are y'all inspired to sort of tighten that up as this season starts? Jerry, I can't hear Tyler. Tim, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna claim operator error on our part there. We'll take him off mute now. I Go expect ahead, it to be operator error on your part. Go ahead now, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we're just looking forward to uh, to being the best team that we can this year. You know, last year things didn't quite go as planned, and now those last three games, as you say, you think things got a little loose. And uh, I think a couple of players can agree to that. So this year, we're just trying to set a new standard to be the best team we can be. Thank you, man. Next up, Andy Anders with Press Pros and Spencer Holbrook on deck. Andy. Uh, yeah, so um, at, at defensive end, how have you been preparing for this season to, you know, step into more of a rotational role? It seems like you'll be getting more reps, and just what have you done to prepare this season? Uh, really just changed my body around. You know, a big part of my off season was getting my body fat down and increasing my flexibility. So I think those two things really helped me just uh, develop into a better player, you know, just play my role in this defense. Gotcha. Thank you. Next up. Spencer Holbrook from Letterman Row with Jeremy Birmingham on deck. Spencer? Uh, yeah, I think I could definitely do both. Uh, I think you guys will see some stuff coming up this year, later on in the season that we got planned for uh, – moving me inside and out. And I, I think the pass rusher part is a little different, but I think that my size and my weight and my strength uh, gives me the ability to move inside as well. Next up, Jeremy Birmingham, Letterman Row with Pat Murphy on deck. Jeremy? Hey, Tyler. Heading into this season, how prepared do you feel like you guys are as a group to, to make that step? Because you have a bunch of guys like yourself and, and Javante and Zach and Tyreek but none of those superstars that we've uh, sort of been accustomed to here. What is the step that you feel like you have to take to get there without that big name? Um, the key thing that Coach Jay keeps telling us, the most excited part about the season, that we're a bunch of no names. You know, we don't have a Bosa, we don't have a Chase Young right now, but that's just how we like it. You know, we never stopped working ever since that last game last year against Clemson. 
And I think of especially Javante, Zach, Tyreek, and Coop and myself, I think we took that personal as far as being the best defensive ends that we can be. Next up, Pat Murphy with 24-7 Sports and Nathan Baird on deck. Pat? Zach was just talking to us about how much you guys learn from each other and the, you know, watching each other in practice, those type of things. Um, can you just talk about what you see from, from other guys and wh how you take little bits of, of other people's games to add to your own, so to speak? The thing that's so exciting about our DNs is that we got flavors. You know, everybody, everybody brings something different to the table. You know, Javante is at with their, their speed and their length. You know, Coop with his ability to, to control the line of scrimmage with his strength and also get off the board. Tyreek, he's just so explosive overall. You know, it's just so twitchy. You know, so we all got these different things that we bring to the table and they all work out well, man. Next up, Nathan Baird with Cleveland.com and Brendan Gulick on deck. Nathan? Hey, Tyler, why can Tyreek Smith have a breakthrough season this year? You said, why can he? Yeah, why can he? Why, why, why would you expect him to have one? Just for Tyreek Smith being Tyreek Smith, you know, I feel like if Tyreek Smith was a starter anywhere else, he'll already be that big name. You know what I'm saying? Like Tyreek, the way he gets off the ball is just something beautiful to watch. You know what I mean? I tell him every day. <laughs> that's, that's some of the craziest get-ups I've seen, you know. And with Chase and Nick has been here. I've seen both of them play. And I tell Tyreek, I was like, man, you got it. You got it. So, yeah, I could definitely see Tyreek emerging into that star. Next up, Brendan Gulick, Buckeyes now on SI with Austin Ward on deck. Brendan? Hey, Tyler, when it was announced that the uh, season was coming back now, obviously several weeks ago, who was your first, uh, your first phone call when you found out the season was coming back, and, and what was that conversation like? Uh, my first phone call was actually to the DNs. We had like a group FaceTime call, and it's go time now. That was basically what the message was, because we never took our foot off the gas. Even when we come coming to the facility, we was trying to find ways to work out any field we can, you know, from getting kicked off the field to being on the field any time of the night that we can just to get some work in. You know, we've been waiting for this. So we just, once we got that phone call, it was just, all right, we locked in now. That we always have been. So you guys weren't together as a group. You were you were separate. Nah, yeah, this is over a face off call. Okay. And we'll have two more questioners for Tyler uh, up next. Austin Ward from Letterman Row with Dan Hope on deck. Austin? Tyler, you've been around Coach Jay long enough to know how much he uh, loves that three-tech position and kicking, you know, ends inside to get a pass rushing threat. If that's something that you could do, how much does that excite you given the way that, you know, he's, he's developed some other guys and turned them loose in that spot? I mean, that excites me a lot because I see it. I see how Taquan was able to do it. I see how Nick moved inside sometimes, and, you know, and I, I saw the plan he had for them. And when I first came in, they told me I had a similar body type to Taquan. So I already kind of expected that as I developed into a better player. So, now, yeah, I'm just excited what Coach Jay has in store for me. And final questions of the afternoon uh, uh, for our group and also uh, individually for Tyler Friday come from Dan Hope with 11 Warriors. Dan? Hey, Tyler, who are some of the younger guys on the defensive line that you're seeing start to step up and maybe be able to start contributing this year? Uh, Darion Henry, he's one that's just come a long way. You know, when he first came here to the play he is now, that's, that's a big difference. You know, of course, they still have work to do. And uh, we, have, we have about five rotating D linemen right now with the DNs that could possibly be starters. You know what I mean? So we got a lot of older guys that could play as well. But the young guys, they're coming along as they should be. You know, Noah Potter, he's doing his thing over there on the practice field, trying to earn as many reps as he can. So, uh, yeah, the young guys are coming along well. Thanks, Tyler. Tyler, thanks so much for your comments today. Thanks for taking time to meet with our media and have a great afternoon and a great practice. Thank you. All right, guys. I'm exhausted. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm exhausted. But, hey, high five, everyone. There we go. Good.